Hi guys, welcome back to my book channel. This is my second video of my four video series for best, worst, most surprising and most disappointing books of 2021. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and you'll love watching books with book recommendations and reviews. And today I'm going to talk about the most disappointing books I read in 2021. It's not the worst books I read that year, but they just disappointed me one way or the other. Um, you might see books that you love on this list, so take everything I say with a grain of salt and obviously this is highly, highly subjective. So the first one might be a bit controversial. It's A Sky Beyond the Storm by Salva Tahir. This is the fourth and last book of the An Ember in the Ashes series, which I know is so, so well loved. To be fair, I kind of set myself up for disappointment anyways when I picked up this book because I started reading this series for the completely wrong reasons. I can't remember what year I picked up the first book. It must have been two, three years ago. But at that point, I was still um, into young adult fantasy and Someone said in a video that this is a great love triangle, so I picked it up for that love triangle, which at this point I'm kind of sick of romance in uh, fantasy books. So this story as a whole is a Roman inspired fantasy series where we have Laia who lives under martial law with her family. Her family essentially gets slaughtered by soldiers called the masks and her brother gets taken and in order to do something about that she um, makes a deal and infiltrates one of those military schools as a slave. And we also follow Elias or Elias, who is one of those soldiers in training. And well, their paths meet and the story goes from there. In general, there were a lot of elements that I did enjoy about this book because, I mean, the reality is I kept reading until the fourth book. For example, The Commandant, the director of this military school, was one of my favorite book villains. She was written so effectively that every time when she came into a scene, she would scare you because she's a very brutal and conniving woman. And in a way, she kind of reminded me of Umbridge. Helene, who is Elias's friend, one of my favorite characters in the books. I thought she had a really great story arc, but the series just really didn't work for me. Not just in this fourth book, but in the three books before, what usually happens was I would read the story and only the highs and the lows of the plots would really excite me. Everything else just felt kind of slumpy and meh. So the series for me is kind of unmemorable. I wouldn't be able to tell you what exactly is the plot in book one, two, three. I think the way the fourth book wrapped up the fates of the characters in the stories, it was mostly unjustified. So for example, the way that the story evolves for the commandant, who is supposedly extremely smart and cunning and really plans 10 steps ahead. I thought the way that her story ended was kind of cliche and kind of weak. I think her story deserved a much, much grander wrap up. And the same goes for the second villain in this story, just kind of, I feel like I've seen and read this a million times before. I mean, I finished the series, so there's no more books, but if there would have been a fifth book, I would have probably not read it anymore because the payoff just wasn't that great. The next book that unfortunately let me down is The Devil in the Dark Water by Stuart Turton. I gave this book three stars. He also wrote The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, which you probably have heard of, and that book I really loved. So I was very excited to read his next novel. This story takes place in the 17th century, where Samuel Pipps, a very well-known detective, is being transported from, I think it's India, all the way to Amsterdam on a ship because of a crime that he did or didn't commit, so he might or might not be executed. And with him travels his very loyal companion, Aaron Hayes, who is also kind of his bodyguard. So that's a good start, right? It's kind of like a locked room mystery in the 17th century that takes place on a ship with the passengers and these um, two main characters. And before the ship sails, in front of the passengers, there's this leper who suddenly appears out of nothing and announces that the devil is going to be with the passengers on the ship and there's going to be bloodshed and all kinds of havoc. I think this is a classic example where the idea is better than the execution, unfortunately. I think the writing itself was fine. The story kept me 
reading. I wanted to know what is going to happen next. I didn't think about DNFing this book, but in general, I thought this book left me a bit confused too. My first issue for me was the stakes didn't feel very high, so after encountering this leper and then the first weird things that happened on the boat, it doesn't feel like a life and death situation for me. It doesn't feel like someone really needs to solve this mystery, otherwise XYZ is gonna happen. And I can't exactly put my finger on the issue, but at times the characters felt very confusing to me in a way that they interacted with each other. So for example, there would be people investigating a mystery, but during the investigation when you would think, oh, they will keep, you know, certain information for themselves to um, to not give things away, they would just spill out their secrets to random passengers on the ship and I wasn't even sure if that's gonna advance uh, their investigation. It's kind of hard for me to explain but sometimes the dialogues and the way the characters interacted with each other didn't make a lot of sense to me, um, but that's just really a very subjective feeling about the story and not an objective observation, so you totally might disagree with me. I do think that the story wrapped up nicely in the end. It's just not a locked room mystery that I would necessarily recommend to people, but I do think the concept was great. I really like the seven and a half deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, so I'm 100% gonna read what Stuart Turton is gonna write next. The next book that unfortunately didn't really work for me was The Last Wish by Andrei Sapkowski. So this is quite relevant right now because this is the book series that The Witcher game and also Netflix series is based on. The second season just came out on Netflix and at the time of filming this video I think I'm four episodes in and I am absolutely loving it just like the first season. So The Last Wish is a collection of short stories and the stories we encounter in the show of season one and season two. What caught me by surprise is that in this collection of short stories there's actually quite a few retellings of fairy tales, which I don't think those parts made it into the TV show. I can't remember watching that. So what I did like was we learn more about Geralt's background, about how witchers are made, and kind of his connection to Ciri, which wasn't mentioned at least in the first season of The Witcher, because I in fact watched the first season first before I then decided to read the book. So yeah, there's definitely some interesting facts that you learn from the stories, which you don't learn from the series, so that was pretty cool. While the female characters in this book make their own choices and they have their own destinies to fulfill and they have their own minds, I do think that the description of their physical appearance leaves a sexist aftertaste. So for example, it just really didn't sit well with me that a 14 year old girl is being scrutinized for how her breasts look like. That just felt really weird and unnecessary. I think there's better ways to describe the appearance of a young girl in a negative way without making it sexual. All in all, this book left me kind of underwhelmed. It might be because it's really just a collection of short stories. It's not even really considered, I think, the first book in the series. I think it's marked as number 0 0.5 on Goodreads. I wasn't really getting attached to the characters, neither was I getting really into the story, and again, might be because it was just short stories, but that's fine with me because I really, really do enjoy the Netflix show. I think the monsters are so effective and creative. I just really love every single new monster we encounter in the series. There's so many fantasy book series out there that for this one, I'm just gonna happily stick with the show and read something else instead. The next book that unfortunately let me down is pretty hyped and very well known. It's The Rosie Project and this was actually a personal recommendation by a friend too so that's why I'm like double bumped that it really didn't work for me. So this story is about a grown man named Don Tillman who has Asperger's and he's also a very smart professor of genetics at the University of Melbourne. One day he decides he's going to find the perfect woman for him through a scientifically based questionnaire. And along the way he meets this woman, Rosie, who has a project on her own. She is trying to find her biological father. So they kind of end up helping out each other. What I really did enjoy about this book is Don Tillman's character. He's a pretty funny guy with a very interesting point of view. So Don as a character is pretty lovable but who I unfortunately really couldn't stand was Rosie. I don't think she treated Don very well, and she didn't seem to have a character development arc at all. 
I found that she herself based her whole life and personality on having daddy issues because she didn't know who her biological dad is and there's just not really a lot of growth from there. Rosie kind of felt like this person in a relationship who demands from her partner to grow and change for her while she just kind of stays the same shitty person that she is. So yeah, I just really couldn't warm up to her, hence I couldn't root for the two of them. I read somewhere that this was supposed to be a movie first, which kind of makes sense because I think if this was a one and a half hour long rom-com, you can get away with much, much more. But because this is a book, it just kind of felt super flat to me. So needless to say, I will not be picking up the next books in the series. Um, what I did like about this book though was how they had their trip to New York City and Rosie kind of planned the things to see and to eat which made me actually really excited for my next New York City trip so that was a huge plus but other than that didn't really work for me if you enjoyed it then good for you but I'm not gonna pick up the next books and the last book that I wanted to mention which is so unfortunate that it made this list is Sex and Vanity by Kevin Kwan. So Kevin Kwan wrote the Crazy Rich Asian series, which I absolutely loved the trilogy and I watched the movie multiple times. It is so enjoyable and laugh out loud funny. And this particular book just didn't hit any of those marks. So in this book, we follow 18 year old Lucy Churchill, who's been kind of navigating an identity crisis her whole life so far because she's half American Chinese and half wasp essentially and she travels to Capri for an ostentatious wedding which that setting I super enjoyed. I loved reading about the island itself and the food and the sea and there she meets George Sao and they go and basically have a passionate moment in that summer. So I couldn't help but compare Lucy with the protagonist in Crazy Rich Asians which is Rachel and Lucy is just not as captivating and relatable as Rachel and the story kind of felt like it was exclusively super eccentric characters but it didn't carry the same type of humor with it so I mean of course I can't relate to Crazy Rich Asians because that's just not the kind of circles I run in it felt completely detached but it was just really hard to empathize with any of the characters in the book this one didn't work for me but I will 100% read everything else that Kevin Kwan is gonna bring out so these were the books that I was very unlucky with and I just really didn't enjoy not quite the worst books that I read but just kind of a letdown. Let me know if you actually love any of these books that I was disappointed with and let me know why. I would love to hear that. So thank you very much for watching.